Good morning and welcome to Solid Rock Apostolic Church. I'm Isaac, one of the student pastors here. If you're new, we're glad you're here. And if you've been here before, we're glad you're back. In just a few moments, the worship team is going to get up and lead us in a few songs, and our pastor is going to get up and speak. But before all of that, I'd like to share with you some ways that you can get involved this week at Solid Rock. Bills, budgets, and taxes are some of the most difficult things that we'll face in adult life. That's why tonight at 6 p.m. at my place, the youth group is having adulting, where we'll tackle most of that and more. Dinner is provided, and we can't wait to see you there. Now, if you or someone you know struggles from addiction, you want to be here at the church at 6 p.m. for our Be Free Addiction Recovery classes. If you have any questions, see Sister Sierra Ventura. Coming in August is our biggest event of the year. It's our youth trip to Gatlinburg, Tennessee. I can't wait, and I know the students can't wait either. Next Sunday, we have a bake sale helping to support that trip. Help the students out, go buy some good stuff. So now that you know about some of our upcoming events, I'd like to thank you for spending part of your weekend here with us at Solid Rock. As you can tell, church is so much more than just a Sunday service, and there are so many ways to get involved. There are two very easy places to start. Number one, you will have received a Connect card on your way in the door. You can fill that out and take it over to the Welcome Center for a gift of our appreciation for spending time with us this weekend. Number two, you can head over to our website at gosrac.com. We are so glad you chose to worship with us at Solid Rock Apostolic Church. Praise the Lord, everybody. Let's all stand. You know what is great? No matter what you go through, no matter what you've been through, you realize one thing and one thing only. There's always an option but God. No matter if you're sick, no matter if you're down, no, no matter if you're depressed, no matter if you need deliverance, there's always an option but God. As long as I have God on my side and I have that option to choose but God, I know everything. I'm saying everything is going to be okay. Everything. No matter, no matter what comes my way. But God is going to bring me through. But God is going to deliver me out. With that being said, He deserves all the praise. All the praise and the honor and the glory. Let's give a hand clap of praise right now. Thank you, Jesus. We worship you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. We thank you, Lord. Let's go to the Lord in prayer real quick. Heavenly Father, we ask you, Lord, to anoint every word, Lord, to anoint every song, God. We thank you and we praise you, God. We worship you, Lord. We thank you for what you're going to do in this place today. In the name of Jesus, amen. Worship with them as they sing. Hallelujah. Let's give him a hand clap of praise all over this house right now. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, yes. I mean, no, he's doing greater things today. He's going to do signs, wonders, and miracles today. Church and make us whole and guide, transform, take us to a place we've never seen before. As you've done the impossible, we've seen our mountains move before. Your word is unstoppable.
พิสูจน์เลยเขาหาเป็นเป็นหิมดู Heaven is coming.
let me do We are here for you Come and do what we do We set our hearts on you So come and do what we do Jesus, you sanctuary if you could just put your arm around somebody that's close to you and just begin to pray with them just begin to pray with them hallelujah come on come on put your arm around someone just begin to pray with them in jesus name hallelujah 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 jesus jesus you're welcome here Jesus, it's all about you, Jesus. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Jesus, I believe, Jesus, I believe, Jesus. Oh, I believe, I believe, I believe, I believe. Oh, God, hallelujah. Come on, chains to be broken in the name of Jesus. Strongholds to be released in the name of Jesus. Mm. Oh God, hallelujah, hallelujah. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you, Jesus.
Hear me today. Hear me today. Hear me today. The Bible, the Bible says that the anointing breaks every yoke. The yoke was that wooden, that wooden long curving thing that they would put on animals. They put on animals to not only tame them, but they would put on animals so that they would, uh, they would till ground. They would till ground. In Middle Eastern culture, they put yokes on people and they would turn the people into animals and they would make the people till the ground. Even according to American culture, when they would bring slaves in off of the boat, they would put yokes around their head. Sometimes the, these yokes would have 10 holes in them and at each one they had chains that they could slip through. We learned this even in our, in our uh, on, on the, in the museum there in Cincinnati. When the Bible says that His anointing breaks yokes, it wasn't just talking about something that's restricting you. It was talking about something that's controlling you. For what good is it to be living and breathing, but still yet be controlled by something or somebody else? So in this place today, it's possible. It's possible you could have came here today freely, but still have a yoke around your neck by the enemy. It's possible that you could have came here today with the yoke of your past telling you that you can only get this far in the spirit but I'm going to pull you back whenever you try to get up and ever you try to get free but that's why in this place we can never quench the spirit because if you quench the spirit you quench someone's ability to get loosened off the yokes that are choking and they're trying to hold you back what we truly do need is we need the anointing of God to fall so strong where chains are broken where yokes are released that choking in your spirit is released and you are free indeed the anointing will break the yoke come on if you're tired of being led around by past guilt you need the anointing to break the yoke if you're tired of the enemy trying to to trying to choke you back and trying to bring you back you need the anointing to break every yoke how do you get the anointing when we begin to worship him and when we truly begin to magnify him authentic true passionate unhinged worship where you just say lord i need you god i worship you lord i magnify you jesus you're the best thing that's ever happened to me Jesus got this. Jesus has got this. Break. Break. 
this room Miracles happen when you move Heaven is coming Miracles happen when you move Turning back to your seats today. If you're praying, pray as long as you'd like. If you're praying, amen. We can we can work around around you today. Amen. How many knows this is where you get your cup filled? This is where you get your recharge, your refuel. This is where you come and you get things right. Amen. I like I like being in the presence of God. I like what I what I feel uh, in the house of God today. Amen. At this time, you may be seated. we like for Brother Jason to come at this time. He's got some announcements and, and some things. Is this the first time you've done this all year? Let's give Brother Jason a hand. The first time he's got to do this all year. Praise the Lord, everyone. I haven't done this since 2019. I forget how to do it. Jiminy. Praise the Lord. So we have a lot of announcements today. Um, first one, uh, the Be Free from Addictions class is going to be this coming up Tuesday, February 18th at 6 p.m. Uh, this coming up Saturday, we have a wedding here at Solid Rock. Um, Saturday, February 22nd at 6.30 um, Sister Lugina and Brother Dustin Hodges, if you're interested, everyone's welcome uh, to come to that. Please RSVP to Sister Lugina. Her phone number is in the bulletin for that. Uh, the men's prayer breakfast is going to be on Saturday, March the 7th from 8 to 10 a.m. See Brother Steve Gifford for more information on that. Uh, it's time for spring softball already. Uh, there's a sign-up sheet on the back bulletin board. Uh, if you have any uh, questions, please see Brother Sean Loxley for that. And uh, today, a volleyball fellowship at the Gettysburg Gym. 
Um, that is at two o'clock. And the Ohio ALJC Women's Conference. Oh, nope. Okay, we're canceling that. Sorry. Just kidding. Um, the Ohio ALJC Women's Conference is uh, Friday, March 13th, and Saturday, March 14th. Uh, registration is $25 per person, and it's due by next Sunday, February the 23rd. And we also have uh, a special announcement right now. If we can have uh, Sister Alora and Sister Kelsey to come up front. <laughs> Praise the Lord, church. Um, I just wanted to, um, our December and our January, we kind of slacked off, but we had the same um, Bible quizzer for our Bible quizzer of the month, so that is Miss Elena Blackburn. <laughs> We just had, um, I just want to let them know like how proud of them we are. So if everybody from the tournament yesterday wants to come up here. Yesterday was, um, we had our first official tournament, and it was a double tournament, so twice the stress, twice the nerves, everything, twice the Bible verses, and they all studied super hard, and they got up here in front of everyone, and they had to buzz in and quote their verses, and we got several first and second place ribbons, you guys can hold those out for them to see, show off your ribbons, give them a hand. Yeah, we just want to say how proud we are of them, and any encouragement you can give them, please do. We appreciate it. At this time, we're going to have our ushers come. We're going to take up our Sunday morning tithe and offering. We're going to have Brother Mike Shell say the prayer this morning.
exalt his name For who is like our Lord and King His glory and his fame is exalted Above the heavens I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord I will praise his name I will praise his name I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord I will praise his name I will praise his name For the rest of my life For the rest of my life I'll forever proclaim I'll forever proclaim He's good He's good I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord I will praise His name I will praise His name I will bless the Lord I will bless the Lord I will praise His name I will praise His name For the rest of my life For the rest of my life I'll forever proclaim I'll forever Exalt his name, we'll magnify the Lord with me. Let us exalt his name. The moon is like our Lord and King, his glory and his fame is exalted above the heavens. I will bless the Lord, I will bless the Lord, I will pray. Sister Lugina, Brother Dustin, love is in the air. Love is in the air. I always tell people if your if your relationship is lacking love, you got to get linked up with another couple that's in love. You see, because when you go on you go on a double date, which I highly don't recommend if you're if you're having problems. <laughs> Because if you go on a double date, it's like the couple that's in love and you're not in quite in love. You know, he done, he done walks her and holds her hand all the way there. So you got two options. Either you step your game up or you're going to hear about it the whole night long. So isn't it a big quinky dink they're sitting next to the Connors over there? Look at them. Look at them. They probably match today. You guys match today? That's, that's something else. That's something else. But that's the truth. Some of you guys know exactly what I'm talking about. You know, there's, there's pressure. There's pressure for guys, you know. You got this other couple. This guy's taking the chair out for his ladies. He's pushing it back in. You know, he's saying, you know, she's saying, honey, what do you think I should order? Honey, order whatever you want. Whatever you want. You know, and... And you're dying to tell your wife, honey, just order off the lunch menu. 
Order off the lunch menu. I'm being facetious. But you know, church is the same way, really. You got to be careful who you sit next to. They can rub off on you either way. You know what I'm saying? One of my favorite things, I'm over there, I'm over there praising God, singing. One of my most exciting parts of this service already is when Brother Steve yells out, Just think about it! And I'm thinking to myself, I better start thinking about it. So I better start thinking about it. Amen. I am so thankful to be in the house of God. And I want to want to tell you guys how much I love you guys. I appreciate you. And uh, aren't, you, aren't you grateful that we can come to the house of the Lord? We can smile. We can worship God. We can praise the Lord. We can lay it at the altar and just leave it there. Just leave it there. Amen. Just leave it there. They don't have to sweep it up. God comes by and he picks it up. He picks it up. And I'm going to tell you today, God did not call you for you to live the losing life. God called you to, for you to live the victorious life. And as long as you stay in Jesus, you're going to make it. You're going to make it. The book of Psalms, chapter 133. And I'm excited again about this message, although I will not preach long. You know me. I'm not going to preach long. But I'm excited about this message because I've been trying to preach it the whole year. So I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it's just a thing. But it's, 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 a, very, it's a very simple passage of Scripture. David steps into a moment... And David sings this song, and really, it's just it's just a short and sweet kind of kind of moment for him. He gets in a, in a, in a phase where he says, "Man, behold, how good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity." Praise God! I mean, it is it, it drops it. I mean, it is it just drops it. He said, "Look, how good." When he says, when I'm going to describe what I feel in the presence of God right now, I just wanted to talk about the benefits of God. How good and how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. But it don't stop there. In verse 2 it says, it is like the precious ointment upon the head. Praise God. That ran down upon the beard, even Aaron's beard that went down. That, that alone is powerful. I'm not going to go there. That went down the skirts of his garment. As the dew of Hermon, and as the dew that descended upon the mountains of Zion. For there the Lord commanded the blessing, even life forevermore. When he was talking about going to the house of God, he said, man, there's nothing like going to the house of God. It's good. It's pleasant. And he said, he said, he goes on further. What makes it good and pleasant? Because good and pleasant is very broad. Yes. He said, he said, this is what's so good about it. It's like the ointment. It's like the anointing that fell down Aaron's face all the way down his beard. And it rolled off his garments onto the ground. What he was saying was is this. When I get in the presence of God, what makes it so good? Woo! This is what makes it so good. The oil, the anointing of God that dwells in the house of God. That's what makes it so good. And when David described it, he looked out there and he said, he said, this is the power of joining together in the house of God. He said, I'm glad that I went to church today because it was pleasant. It was unity filled and the power of God began to break some yokes off of my life. It was that all anointing that fell it was heaven sent it was heaven sent it was heaven sent if you look even back the 120 chapter you'll, you'll look at the beginning of the chapter he said he, he said it, it, you'll probably see that this psalm is labeled uh, in your bible it'll say a psalm of degrees or a song of ascent that is powerful because in this particular psalm, David prays to God concerning Doeg. This was a God, the spy. This was a spy of Saul. 
And I'm not going to get too much in this, but this was Doeg was a spy of Saul that Saul had commissioned to go and find where David was so that he might kill him. Remember, Saul had chased him around. So while David is writing these songs, he's being chased by the enemy who wants to kill him but still can find himself pleasantly enjoying the house of God because he said, man, when I get into the presence of God, I got enemies that are trying to take me down. But when I get into the presence of God and I'm around people that love me and that we love God, I'm telling you, all that stuff just begins to fall off of me because there's nothing like being in the presence of God with praisers and with worshipers and the power of God begins to fall down. That's why, that's why we need to lift up Jesus in this place. We need to magnify God in this place. There's nothing stronger than the praising of God's people. And so Psalms 133, which was saying on the next to the last step, was a song of unity. It just simply reads how good, how pleasant it is for brethren to dwell together in unity. Before you're seated today, this was considered one of the top songs and it is a song that needs to be sang among the church today. Among the church today. Because in the days of, of, of time, there were two shifts of praisers. I'm going to have you be seated, I promise you. There were two shifts of praisers that always dwelt in the house of God. There was the day praisers. There was the day praisers. The day praisers were specifically meant for the seasoned saints to praise God. People that had been in it for a hot minute, they would come and they'd worship and they'd praise God throughout the tabernacle, throughout the temple, and they would magnify God. And then the night shift, the night praisers would come in as the day praisers would check out. The night praisers were not, not necessarily for those that were seasoned, but for those that truly knew who God was in the time of trouble. They could be new converts. They could be people that don't know any better. They could be people that just got saved and they just knew who Jehovah was. They would put them on the night pray shift. Why? Because they were used to staying up all night anyway. Let's just change who they're serving and change who they're partying for and let's put them in the house of God. So the night shift would take place as the day shift would leave. And the most important thing was this. He said that it was the dwelling place. It was the place where, where not only the seasoned saint would come, but the new convert would come and they would go to the house of the Lord and they would begin to worship God together and they begin to lift up God because it without the praising of God, God, they knew that these new converts would not be able to last. So with that thought in mind, with that thought in mind, before I read Psalms 134, but, and I'm going to have you be seated, I want to preach a very simple message, a very simple message entitled The Night Shift. Let's praise. Jesus, Lord, I praise you and I love you today, God. I, I thank you for your spirit. I thank you, Jesus, for what you're doing in our lives, Lord. I pray, Lord, that I could speak a word of encouragement, God. I pray, Lord, that we'd be perfectly aligned with your word. I pray, God, that we would be able to motivate, to encourage God. Lord, us to go to that fervent prayer, that fervent, let's see, God. Lord, that you want for, our, for the church of the living God. Jesus, I praise you. I magnify you, Lord. I lift you up. I praise you today, God. I pray that someone would work the night shift. Lord, help Help me, encourage me, God, as we preach the word of the Lord. And everyone said, in the name of Jesus, in the name of Jesus, you may be seated today if you promise not to sit down on me. And so, with that thought in mind, the two, the two shifts of praisers, the day praisers and the night praisers, uh, the, the book of Psalms 134 begins to, to be written shortly after 133, obviously, and it simply says, Behold, verse number 1 of 134, Behold, bless the Lord, all ye servants of the Lord, which by night stand in the house of the Lord. He goes on, he specifically says, he says, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless 
the Lord. If you've ever wanted to know why people lift up their hands in church, let me tell you, this is not a modern thing. This is not a, hey, this new age thing. This is something that's been going on for a long period of time. Because David said, if you're going to work the night shift in the house of God, make sure that when you get to the house of the Lord, that you lift up your hands in the presence of God and begin to magnify God. Verse number three, it says, the Lord that made heaven and earth bless thee out of Zion. In other words, is this, is that God's house is a place where he should be praised, where he should be magnified, where he should be blessed. If you don't have nothing to thank God for, just thank him because you were created. Thank him because you got breath in your body. Thank him because you got a mind. Thank him because you got strength. Thank him because he is God and he is worthy to be praised. He is worthy to be praised. You see, it was at the night shift. The night praisers had the hardest job of praising God because while everybody else was snuggled tight in their beds, uh, uh, sleeping in their beds, uh, uh, spiritually speaking, if you would, uh, the night shift had to come on the scene and they had to clean up the mess that the day shift had made. They had to go into the presence of God. Already, the, the house was already filled with the smoke of God because there's many times mentioned in Scripture that there would be a heavy smoke in the house of God. They called it the Shekinah glory. It was God's presence that could be seen in the house of God. And when the people had seen God's presence and they saw what God was doing, they, they knew that I'm entering into a place where there's been prayer that's been offered up. I'm going into a place where I know there's been praisers in the day shift. The night shift had to trust the day shift and the day shift had to trust the night shift. But there there was to be praise. There was to be worship. There was to be God magnified both morning, afternoon, day, and night, always 24 hours a day, that the house of God might be a place where there is always his presence. Why? Because there was a devil out there that was trying to still kill, to steal, and to destroy. Can I tell you, when the devil's trying to mess with your family, you need to bring your family to the house of God. When the devil's trying to mess with your mind, bring your mind to the house of God. When the devil's trying to mess with your job, you need to pray for an application, then go to the house of God and say, God, I'm going to praise you. Through the good times, praise God. Through the bad times, praise God. Through the morning time, praise God. Through the night shift, praise God. Let everything that hath breath praise the Lord. Praise ye the Lord. Whether he gives or whether he takes away, blessed be the name of God, Job said. No matter what comes our way, somebody's got to work the night shift. The night shift is inconvenient. The night shift is hard. The night shift is heavy. The night shift, it, it messes with your, 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 your psyche. It messes with your, your, your system. But God honors those that will work the night shift. When you come into the presence of God, make sure that you're ready to work the night shift. And, and, and again, in Psalms 134, it says, it says, it says, it says, when you come into the night stand, stand in the house of the Lord, lift up your hands in the sanctuary and bless the Lord because the Lord has made the heavens and the Lord has made the earth bless thee out of Zion bless thee Zion was that place where they went to it was a hard place it was a trying place but God said in one scripture he said don't become ease in Zion don't become used to being here make sure that you go to the house of the Lord and you bless the Lord that you give your best to God and you give everything and leave it there because there must be someone willing to work the night shift. Night praisers, you must know that your praise is saying from the top step and not the bottom one. You've already, you've already endured Doeg, David. You've already endured Saul's hitman. Now you need to learn to go to the house of God and begin to lay down your fears at the altar. For there will be a lot of people that will praise God, but will never lay down what they're facing in the presence of God. You see, Doag represents the enemy trying to kill us, but the enemy cannot enter into the presence of God. 
For if the enemy would ever enter into the presence of God, God would fight on your behalf because God, he will not refuse a worshiper. He will not refuse someone that will praise God from the bottom of their heart. We learn this even in the New Testament. In the book of Acts chapter 16 verse 25 the Bible says Paul and Silas begin to pray and they sang praises unto God. That, that, that word that word praises comes from a Greek word entitled humnio which literally means to sing a song of Victory. Now, now, now Humio was not was not just any Christian song, but it was specifically a song of victory. In other words, is it wasn't amazing grace. It was more like let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Why? Because when you're in prison, you got to make sure you're singing the right song to get you out, not just to make you feel comfortable staying in. Someone says, someone, they, 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 might, they might say, well, well, if, if I'm down and out, just sing me a song. A song. That we, we often look for songs that will identify where we're at. But I will tell you that, 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 that faith singing is different. I think I know a little bit about singing here or there. Faith singing is not where you're at. Faith singing is where you want to be. And so when you begin to sing the songs of Humio of what God's will is, you don't begin to sing songs of doom and gloom. You begin to sing songs of triumphant. You begin to sing of songs of I'm coming out. You begin to sing songs of I'm going to break free. You begin to sing songs of victory. Because what good is it for you to feel sad in prison but never have the song of Humio to get out of prison? We come here so that we can get out, not feel at home in. And Humio, they begin to sing the song of praises of God unto God. And the prisoners heard them. Sometimes you got to sing so loud where everyone hears you. Oh, praise God. Praise God. They sung so loud, the prisoners heard them. Even when they didn't like that. Can you imagine how many prisoners were in there that didn't like the song that, that, that Paul and Silas was singing? Why, there was prisoners there that probably had life sentences. There's probably prisoners in there that, 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 that were, they, were, they were on death row. And here's old Paul and Silas coming back from a red hot revival. And they go to the house of God. Look at these newbies that come into the house of God. They, they often say the first, the first 10 to 20 days you're in prison, most of the time they'll hear you crying because it's a shock culture. When you go to prison, they hear you crying and they hear you weeping. Even if you're tough and you're big and you're strong, you begin to melt down because you realize that your freedom has just been taken away from you. And here's Paul and Silas. They come into as newbies into the prison and they should have been crying. Instead, they were singing and praising God. Let me tell you what. It's possible to be in prison, but prison not be in you. They're in here and they're in prison and these, uh, these old newbies are trying to change the culture. They're, 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 they're trying to change everything. Uh, and, and the Bible says they sang so loud, the humio so loud uh, that everybody around them heard them uh, and they began, uh, they began to, the, the, to sing praises. Uh, and as they begin to sing praises, uh, they, begin to, they begin to move. Uh, and when God, when they begin to move, God begin to move. Now, now this, is, this is very important, church, because God's been dealing with me hardcore this year, 2012, for the past month and a half, I've heard it almost every day, and almost every day there's been challenges that have taken place and, and the, the constant message that God's been telling me is this, don't be distracted, don't be distracted this is a distraction this is a, this is a distraction can I tell you why is it that Satan fights us so hard for our attention this is why, because if he can get your attention as to where you're going, then he can get your attention and keep you where you're at that's the power. Sometimes you got to be locked up, but don't be in change in your spirit before they begin to cry out and sing praises to God. He said, he said, I'm not going to be a product of the prison. I'm going to be a prison, a product of my praise. And so the night shift kicked in and Paul said, I'm just going to praise him right now where I'm at. Some people don't think that they can praise him unless they've had a good week. 
Some people don't think that they can praise him unless, unless they've been good for 24 hours a day. Can I tell you, if you'll, hold, if you'll shut your mouth up, the rocks will cry out because God's going to get the praise regardless of what you're, what you're in or where you're at. The Bible says that the prisoners heard them and the very next verse says, and suddenly, and suddenly there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately all the doors were opened and everyone's bands were loosed. That's the power of prayer and that's the power of the night shift praisers. The night shift praisers just praise God. They worship God and praising and the prison chains are loosed. The night shift kicked in and the prison was changed by the night shift praisers. You see, the Bible goes on. It says the keeper of the prison, he, he was so messed up. In fact, in fact, he wasn't even a good he wasn't even a good employee because the Bible actually says he fell asleep. He was sleeping on the job. He was distracted before there was, there was even a cell phone. He he fell asleep on the job. Why? Because he 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 looked at the situation, and said everyone's locked up, no one's getting out, no one's ever broken out of this prison. But I'm going to tell you right now, there's been a lot of prisons from this time forward that's been broken into and broken out of. There's a lot of things that can, be, that can move in the prison. You know, do you, you, you want to know the most drug-infested places is not, is not the downtown of anywhere? It's our prisons. Because you can sneak stuff in and you can sneak stuff out constantly. But what, what Paul and Silas snuck in, they didn't sneak in any drugs. They just snuck in some humio. They said, they said, we're gonna, you, you, you might, you might take our clothes from us, you might beat our backs, but you can never take away our praise. You can never take away our worship. And so they came in and they came in filled with the Holy Ghost. And when they begin to praise God, Something started happening. Yes. Something started happening and your whole life, your whole life, you're, you're going to get to places in your life where you're going to have constant distractions. The enemy will send constant distractions your way. He'll send you constant battles in your way, but you got to be like Job and you got to keep a made up mind that says, Lord, though you slay me, yet will I serve you. Though I'm going down, Lord, I'm going to lift you up. Though, I, though, I, though my hands may be tied, never let my worship be tied. Let my prayer ring out. Somebody's got to work the night shift. Someone's got to work the night shift. The Bible says in Joshua chapter 6, now Jericho was straightly shut up because of the children of Israel. None went out and none came in. This was a strategy used by the enemy a lot of times. The enemy didn't have to kill you overnight. They could just starve you while you're in. <laughs> and they're actually even still doing that today. They'll just starve you. If, if I can freeze your funds up, then you're not going to have the money to buy and produce and reproduce things. And so the enemy doesn't, we often say, well, the devil's trying to kill me today. Now, he might be trying to kill you today, but he's probably definitely trying to starve you out. Right. And that's what they did. No one got in. No one left. And what happened was, uh, was this. Uh, and, and, and it says, And ye shall compass the city, all men of war. Go round about the city once. Thou shalt do this for six days. And seven priests, seven being the number of completion, if you would. Uh, six being the number of incompletion. Seven priests shall bear the ark. Uh, seven trumpets of ram's horn. Uh, seven the day. Ye shall compass the city seven times. Uh, and the priests shall blow with the trumpets. Uh, and it shall come Come to pass uh, that when they make a long blast with the ram's horn, uh, they, and when ye hear the sound of the trumpet, uh, all the people shall shout uh, with a great, uh, a great uh, shout, uh, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat. Uh, 
What did he say? He said, you need to get the presence of God. Make sure you don't leave the Ark of the Covenant out of this. Get the presence of God to show up. And while you're at it, get seven priests to come and to worship God. And while you're at it, make sure you strike up the band. And because this wall will only fall down when God's presence is there and when God's worshipers are there. When you're in the battle of your life, you need to find you someone that will worship God. Especially someone who will worship God in the night shift. Because the devil will come in. And the Bible does not say he is a lion, but the Bible says he will roar as if he was a lion. And he'll roar and he'll roar. And when you're down to nothing, sometimes the roars can get a little bit confusing. You need someone that's very close to you that will say, hey, wait a minute. That devil isn't in charge. Let's serve a God who is in charge. And so you got to find you someone that will praise God even in the night shift of your life. I want the music to get up here very, very, very quickly. And it goes on. It says, and it shall come to pass when they make a long blast with the ram's horn. When you hear the sound of the trumpet, all the people shout with a great shout. Someone say a great shout. Someone say a great shout. That's amazing. I've, I've, worked, I've worked youth for 10 and a half years. I've been pastoring now for 10 years. I've never heard a point where our older people was louder than the younger people. A great shout. A great shout. In other words is, sometimes you can't be passive when the powers of hell is trying to take you out. Sometimes a kumbaya worship will not work. You need to come, come and get some praise. You need a violent praise. You need a praise that the devil will listen to and say, oh no, he's serious this time. Let's get out of here, praise. That's the power of lifting up a great shout before the Lord. Because the Bible said, shortly after a great shout, it said, and the wall of the city shall fall down flat, and the people shall ascend up, every man straight before him. And Joshua, the son of Nun, called the priest and said unto them, take up the ark of the covenant. Get God's presence to come down. Let the priest bear seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord. What did he say? He, now, I, I'm, I wish I had more time, but I don't. It, it, this, is, this is the power of this. He did not say for the, for the people, to everyone, just go ahead and, let, and, and get yourself an instrument and start praying and start playing. Because if you're not trained for the instrument, you'll cause more confusion to what you will. Unity. Can I hear someone? You don't want to hear me on the piano. <laughs> the only song that I can halfway play is that old song called Lean On Me. I'm saying, Lean On Me. You don't want me to sing it. I'm going to sing it. That's about it. That's all I can do. If you have me play this on the piano, I'm not going to be able to play it. I don't even know what key they're in. I have no idea. I've been around, around music my whole life. I've had zero interest on how to play. Zero. Here's the problem. If I get on the piano and not been trained for it, there will be no walls that will fall down. If I get on these drums, I can keep a half, a half beat. I think I can clap pretty good. I don't know. I think I can clap on beat. I can't play the drums that good at all. I, I got, I'm a one-trick pony. That's it. That's it. If I get on this bass, I won't even know. I don't know what to do. I can hit it real hard. I'll probably break strings. I don't know what to do. The only thing I can do halfway decent is sing, and I, and, and I find the older that I get, I don't even want to do that much as much as I did before. <laughs> but this is the power. He never told all the people to play. He just said, I need seven people that know they're called by God and that know how to play the ram's horn. And I want you to grab that ram's horn. And when I say go, you're to play it as loud as you possibly can. And this is why I think it's important to know this. Because there are churches everywhere across America, and sadly, a lot of apostolic churches, that will tell you, if you come to this church, I'll let you do this and I'll let you do that. You, the truth of the matter is, is they may not be trained to do this or that. 
And we have sold the platform and the pulpit. Praise God. I know I'm telling the truth. Well, if you come here, you can be a preacher. You come here, you can be a singer. You come here, you can play the drums. Play here, and, 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 and we've made God's church an auction. You know, how about... So, the truth of the matter is this. The priest alone will not make the walls fall down. Because the Bible said that when they blew the trumpets, the Bible said that the majority of, of the audience was not trumpet players. The majority of the audience was not the art carriers. But the majority of the audience was the shouters. I'm coming to an end. Hear me out. Hear me out. Some people have devalued the shouter. Well, you're not good enough. All you can do is shout. This is why. Because talent can, can, can help you or teach you how to play a drum. Talent can, can help you or teach you how to sing. Talent can even, I've seen, I've seen talented preachers that had zero anointing. They'd get on top of pulpits and they'd preach and they'd sit on top of them and they'd wave their hankies a certain way and they'd preach it in the mirror, but there's no anointing. But I'm going to tell you right now, not everyone was born to be a preacher. Not everyone was born to be a singer. Not everyone was born to be in the choir. Not everyone was born to be a trumpet player. Not everyone in this sanctuary can play it all. But each and every one of us can shout. Because as long as you got breath and as long as you got half of a voice, then you can lift up your voice and you can shout unto God and you can praise Him and you can magnify Him. You may not play a trumpet, but can you shout? You may not play the piano, but can you shout? I'm telling you today, we need the night shift to kick in. The Bible says, just keep on staying. If you want to stay all across the sanctuary, I'm preaching as good as I'm probably going to, going to preach today. The Bible said the armed men went before the priest that blew with them the trumpets. They had people that was fighting all around them. I'm not going to get into that today, but I thank God. I thank God. And I say this with all my heart. I thank God I got people in front of me and, and, in, and in back of me. I thought yesterday I was driving to Kroger's. This is the craziest thing. I, I, I don't know. I, I'm, I'm, I'm looking for blessings everywhere in my life right now. I'm just looking for blessings everywhere. I was driving, Lucas, this is, this is cool. You, even you're, even you're going to like this. My wife calls me on the way home from a Bible quizzing tournament. She calls and says, I'm on 35. The car is like shaking and the ABS is on. The, 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 uh, the battery light is on and, and some other light that was going on. I don't know. I'm like, um, so I'm, I'm grabbing the keys. I'm fixing to grab Braxton and I'm fixing to kick Clayton off the PlayStation and he's going to go out with me. And I'm like, all right. So I was like, all right, keep me posted. So I get off the phone. I call up Brother Joel, who's already left for work. I call up Brother, Brother Joel. I said, hey, man, I'm probably not going to make it tomorrow for Dylan to practice with the praise team because we all have to ride together. We all have to ride together. Said, okay, I understand, you know, blah, blah, blah. And, and she, she rolls up. I got the door already open. She rolls up. She says, hey, hey, uh, do you care to get in the car? Something has happened. She's like, I think it's fine now. I'm like, okay. <laughs> now, you got to understand something. The battery light's been on since Friday. All these other lights, they came out of nowhere. I, don't, I mean, I don't know what happened to these other she gets in the house. I get in the car. I really didn't want to go to Kroger, but she said, go to Kroger's and, and you need to get those flowers. Sister Lena, Sister Lena, yeah. yeah. Pastor's got good taste. <laughs> go to, and, and I get in the car. I'm thinking, oh man, you know, what in the world? I get in the car. I turn on. I'm like, there ain't no lights on. What's going on? Now, I don't know if the altar is going out. I don't know what's going on. The lights could kick on, but I, I begin to think to myself, as I just drove down the street, I begin to think to myself, someone's been praying. Someone's been praying. And I, 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 I thought to myself, uh, I thank God that I got people all around me that are praying. I know I've got people all around me that are, that are constantly praying. God, 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 protect the pastor. Protect this, protect that. Because, because if, 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 if a man of God doesn't have people who want to pray for the man of God, then he never was a man of God to the people. All right, that's right. Come on, pastor. That's 
He might be a self-man made and man made of God, but he's not God called man of God because last time I checked, you cannot be a pastor and not have no one that you're pastoring. That's right. That's right. That's right. Just like you can't be a leader and you're not leading anyone. <laughs> well, I'm a leader. Well, praise God, ain't nobody following. You're a leader by title, but you're not a leader by example. I'm going to get off that. Whatever. Whatever. The armed man went before the priest that blew the trumpets. The reward came after the ark. The, re the, the reward came after the ark. And the priest going on and blowing with the trumpets. And Joshua had commanded the people saying, Ye shall not shout, nor make any noise with your voice. You gotta, he's trying to establish order. He's trying to establish order. He said, I don't want you to, to shout prematurely. Prematurely. You ever, you ever been in church services where people would, would preacher would be preaching? People would be acting like he just got done preaching a conference message. I'm thinking, this cat hasn't even said anything. <laughs> he ain't said anything. I mean, I mean, he's just talking. Can I tell you right now? You gotta be careful that you're just not shouting to make noise. Uh-huh. That's, that's right. That's right. Because I think that we're guilty of that in Apostolic Church. The priest told them, yeah, you say, Pastor, you tell us to shout, we're going to shout. We're going to shout this church all the way down. Praise God. Well, bless God. Sometimes God tells you to hush up. Yep. Hold your peace. Yep. Listen. Yep. Listen. Observe. If you're shouting 24 hours a day, seven days a week, you're going to shout a lot of people away. That's right. Amen. That's right. Praise God. He said, hush up. You don't say a word until I tell you don't shout don't make any noise with your voice neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day I bid you to shout this is this is oh man I, I know I had you stand but let me, let me just add this in I'll hurry up back in back in the day I remember I had a pastor pastors that would tell you when you get to the house of God you make sure you use the bathroom before you get in the house of God some of you old timers know where I'm going with this. You go use the bathroom. I had, I had parents. Matthew, you go use the bathroom. In fact, my mom would wait outside the bathroom until I was done. You know what I'm saying? We, you know. This is before they had cell phones. I know everyone likes to take their cell phone with them. Now you you know. I didn't have no cell phone. I just had me, Jesus, in the bathroom and you know, close it up and do it. Why? Why? Parents, I'm some of you newer age parents in there. I'm like, we're, we're gonna, I'm, I'm messing, but I'm really not. Here's why. Here's why. Because when you come to God's house, God's presence is there. That's right. And if you're not careful, if you're not careful, you'll miss out of the beautiful blessings of God. That's right. That's right. And take everyone down that's distracted by your mess with you. Praise God. Well, Jesus, forgive me. I just messed it all up. You got one song and you're running out. I know you ain't got no bladder. Bring in a doctor's note. <laughs> Here's the problem. You got to know when to shout. And if you're not present, you're not going to hear the commandment by Joshua to shout when it's time to shout. You'll be making noise, but it won't be the noise that God wants. And so when you come to the presence of God, you got to be ready to experience the presence of God in your life. And so Joshua said, be quiet until I tell you to be quiet. Don't even make a noise. But when, when God told Joshua, the Bible said the ark of the Lord can pass the city. It went around once and, 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 and they came into the camp and lodged in the camp. Joshua rose up in the morning. The priest took the ark and seven priests bearing seven trumpets of ram's horns before the ark of the Lord went out continually continually and they blew with the trumpet and the armed men went before them and but the reward came after them and the Bible goes on it says on the seventh day they rose up early about the dawning of the day and compassed the city after the same manner seven times only on that day they passed it seven times 
and as they went around the priest blew the trumpet and Joshua said unto the people he said he said shout for the Lord has given you the city shout 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 unto God with the voice of triumph in this place today Somebody needs to work the night shift. Come on, I want us to lift up our hands in this place today. And I want you to begin to shout. That means lift up your voice. Call on the name of Jesus. Begin to worship Him. Begin to magnify Him. And begin to exalt His name together. Shout. Shout, shout, if you want your walls to fall, shout, you may not play an instrument, but you can use your voice as a weapon to shout. Hallelujah, Jesus, shout, hallelujah, Jesus, shout, hallelujah, Jesus, shout, shout, shout. Shout, 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 shout. Praise God. Hear me out, hear me out, hear me out. I'm going to close, I'm going to close. 135, praise ye the Lord, praise ye the name of the Lord, praise him, O ye servants of the Lord, ye that stand in the house of the Lord, in the courts of, of the house of our God, praise the Lord, for the Lord is good, sing praises unto his name, for it is pleasant, for the Lord hath chosen Jacob unto himself and Israel for this peculiar treasure, for I know that the Lord is great, and that our Lord is above all other gods, when you don't know what else to do and you can't play and you can't sing you can always shout unto God and God will hear your shout in closing today in closing today we're going to have an altar service but I want you to move your way out of your seat and I want some night shift praisers to come on down we're going to close but we're going to close in praise today the night shift praisers come on down Praise God. Come on now. We need the night shift praisers. People that, people that says, I'm going to praise God. Even in inconvenient times. Hallelujah, Jesus. Oh, Lord. Come on, come on, night shift. Let's praise God. Let's worship God, night shift. Oh, God. Come on, if you need some walls to fall down, just lift your shout up. Some walls to fall down with the praise up. This is the night shift. This is the night shift. Let's praise him. Let's praise him. It's time to praise. It's time to lift up your voice. It's time to shout. It's time to shout. Jesus! Jesus!
worship. Let's praise God. Let's praise God.
I know we got it, we gotta go. Sister Michelle, could you come up here real quick? Hurry, come on, come on, come on, come on. I won't embarrass you. I know you're matching brother, brother Kent today. I wouldn't want to embarrass you. Sister Olivia, go ahead and hop on down, sit here. I, I, I need some sisters to come and help me sing here. Just, you don't have to sing, Greg. Just get up here. You know this song. If you don't know this song, you ain't been in church a while. Doesn't, doesn't Brother Shane look good up here? Is this your first time? Your first time? All right, you, you get this step. Grab Sister Allison's mic. I need another man. We need some more men singers up here. Amen. All right, Brother Mark. Brother Mark, come on, come on. Come on, come on up here. Come on, grab that mic right there. Grab that mic. Here, take this. All right, sing. You gotta, you gotta turn it on. And you have to sing in, in English. <laughs> hear me out, hear me out. I'm gonna say something. I, I gotta be done. I'm sorry, forgive me. I went a little bit longer today. When the day shift is done, the night shift has gotta come up. And keep the same momentum. Because you cannot have revival halfway. And you'll get better production if you have the day shift and the night shift kicking. Is there one more microphone up here? Is there one more? Is there one more? Praise God. Sister Kathy, where's Kathy? Come on up here, sister. Share with Sister Barbie. And here's how it works. Here's how it works. So I'm going to tell you. I'm gonna, I've been there, done that. I led worship for 10 plus years. Actually, it was longer than that. It was longer than that. And I had to learn how to worship with the other worship leader before I got up there and started leading worship myself. So those that had a mic in my hand, let me tell you, the greatest lesson you ever get in your whole life is this. Make sure you worship with other people that are worshiping. Because if you can't worship with them when they're singing, then you are probably worshiping yourself when you were singing. Watch yourself. So I think that's why it's important that when you when you get your mic up, you just say, all right, now roles changed, night shift just kicked in. It's time to worship God from a different platform. And that, oh, can't stop praising his name. I just can't stop praising his name.
Come on, won't you worship Jesus now? Worship Jesus.
If you got social media, I want you to post your favorite, your favorite victory song. Post your favorite victory song. And it better not be in that boom scoop and juggy, you know what I chop. <laughs> post your favorite victory song. Because I'm gonna tell you something. I told this to our to our worship leaders the other day. The word sorrow, sadness, all this other stuff like that is in the Bible X amount of times. But the word joy, rejoice, gladness is in there twice as much as those songs. I'm not, I'm not saying, Pastor, should we not cry? My God, cry. But if you're not careful, you'll drown in your tears. That's right. Come on, Pastor. Come on. My God, we should laugh twice as much as more we cry. That's right. We should dance twice as much more than we, than we sorrow. That's right. So then today, your homework, post you a song that makes you feel happy in Jesus. In Jesus. And if you don't have one, find you one. Find you one. Get yourself a song, turn the radio up as loud as you can, and sing it to the top of your lungs. Let the other car hear you. Come on! Let people around you start to question and you're questioning your sanity by your worship today. And I promise, I promise God will bless you for it today. Jesus, thank you, Lord, for your presence today. I thank you, Jesus, for all the men and the women of God, Lord, that just are sensitive to your spirit, Lord. I pray today, God, that as we leave this place, a night shift mentality will follow us home. I pray, God, that we'd have a praise upon our lips. I pray that we'd have a shout in our step. I pray, God, that you'd give us a song of victory and of shout and of greatness, God. Lord, I pray, Lord, through the midnight hour, God, that we'd sing your praises. God, I pray today, Lord, that our church would be transformed into a shouting church. We love you. We praise you. We give you glory, and this is you. And, Lord, and none of us, and we magnify you as such. In the name of Jesus, we pray. Everyone said in Jesus' name. Turn your neighbor and say you're on the night shift. May the Lord bless you. May the Lord bless you so good.